Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So I guess I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Victoria Jane Chisholm. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date as it means a lot to both Victoria and I to connect yeah. with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future and transform your present to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on your next steps and take charge of your destiny so you can fill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guide meditation or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guest, like today's guest, Victoria Jane Chisholm, about dragons and angels, the connection. Now, Victoria is a passionate native of Scotland and the force behind the intuitive listener. With expertise in dragon and elemental energy, she mentors individuals, catalyzing remarkable transformations in their personal and business endeavors. Victoria harnesses her own unique dragon modalities to facilitate healing with dragons, laser focus sessions and mentoring. Her healing approach delves into releasing trauma, dispelling old narratives and alleviating physical discomfort using the power of dragon energy alongside in-depth readings, shamanic journeys and dragon strands activations. As a Reiki master and practitioner of soul pattern healing, as well as Lemurian light wave healing techniques, Victoria offers a holistic approach to well-being. Now, in the past, Victoria also ventured into the world of self-publishing, authorizing a captivating paranormal romance novella. Embracing her mystical essence, she embodies the archetype of witchy woman. Now, with testimonials such as OMG, Simply Fabulous, Victoria is an amazing healer and her work with the dragons, phenomenal, so powerful. As an intuitive reader, spot on could not fault her. I love getting readings and healing from her, highly recommend. I'm positive you will not be disappointed. And I had an amazing Atlantis Pyramid reading tonight. Victoria is really talented and she can pick things as she goes without me saying a word. She is a gifted soul and an amazing person. I totally recommend her. So without further delay, hello, Victoria, and welcome to the Destiny Show. How are you today? I am great, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Ah, you're welcome. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Victoria and I want to be part of this conversation. So please it's don't be shy. So Victoria, why don't you tell us more about your personal journey and about the connection between the angels and the dragons and how they can both help us grow? I would love to. So as you said, I'm Victoria Jean Chisholm. And basically my personal dragon journey started very young in life. Spirit came into my life when I was only seven years old. First things that kicked in were healing hands. My hands would literally heat up around sick animals and sick people. And that was like my first introduction into the holistic world and the way of working was, I didn't know at the time, but Reiki energy and source energy. I was able to differentiate from a young age what was spirit energy, what was angel energy, what was fae. And there was this other energy that was constantly around me, constantly trying to get into my energy field. And it was a much stronger energy, but it was deeply nourishing. And it felt very calming and very positive to me. And it wouldn't be until I was about 12 years old, mid-teens, that the how do I put this? The puzzle pieces started to fit into place for me. And I was starting to recognize that this was potentially dragon energy that was trying to come through for me. And it was just like, once that energy came into sync for me, and I recognized it as a powerful light force energy, um, it opened up so many doors. It just made my life better in many ways. But I worked with them on a very subconscious level for a long time. 
And it wasn't until my daughter was born in 2015 that it became a much more conscious effort to connect with them. But they had always been there. It was just effortless to me. It was just like welcoming best friend energy. I think a lot of people that have been raised in Christianity um, beliefs and that's households, they have this misconception that dragons and angels, they're two different parts of the spectrum. That one is this beautiful light being who de delivers divine messages from source. And the other one is connected into that hellish hot place that we won't really talk about. Nothing could be further from the truth. These guys team up all the time. So I really want to talk about some dragons. And I'll speak about the main archangels to start with, because I could go on on this for ages. But I really just want to speak about the archangels for a little bit. And I might introduce some more towards the end. Yeah. That really, they just, they want the best. Dragons and angels are go about things in different ways. But dragons are very good at remembering our base emotions. So they remember those feelings of anger, fear, hurt. Because the human race was not always nice to the dragons. We've got to be honest. They were not that. No. No. You know, they went out, they hunted them and everything else. And they chased them off the planet once in time as well. So the dragons didn't always have this, hey, let's be best buddies vibe towards us. But they stayed away, they studied us, and they saw humanity make that turning point, making the effort to be more conscious about their actions, about their words, and pushing it up to a higher vibration. Some of us do it well, some of us not so much. But that is life. That is just the way the planet goes, basically. So let's talk about three dragons that are all connected into Archangel Michael's energy sphere. Now, not all archangels have dragon teams named after them. And not all archangels will work with the dragons. But Archangel Michael, his dragon, his dragon clans, that's the way I'm gonna put it, his dragon clans, the clans of dragons that come towards him when he calls, all have similar qualities to Archangel Michael himself. So when you think of Archangel Michael, you think of the warrior, you think of the protector, you think of the strength, you think of this nurturing energy. So you have these deep blue dragons clans that are out there and i've always called them since working with them the bodyguards of the dragon world because that is how they are they always come in a clan of five you will never see a deep blue dragon just one if you see one deep blue dragon i guarantee you it's a galactic one and that's a whole nother story but <laughs> these guys they're always in a team of five i always say to my clients this these are the dragons you call in. You want to get out of that messy relationship. You want to defuse a situation of a room that you've just walked into and the energy is super tense. You can cut that energy with a knife. You are feeling in a hostile environment. You feel unsafe when you step out your door. Get these dragons to travel with you. There's always one at front, two at the side, two behind. You are protected. There is nothing going to get for you. But like the angels can physically move us out of situations that are life and death, these dragons, because they can handle the most dense of energy, can physically move us to. If we are in a serious situation, these will not let anything harm you in any way. The next dragon that works with Archangel Michael is the Royal Blue and Gold Dragons. Now, this one works a little bit different because you remember Archangel Michael's Sword of Truth, that this is the purity of your words, staying honest, really being bound to your word. The royal blue and gold dragons are really dragons that allow you to remember your gifts, remember your purpose, what made you come here for this lifetime, to use either any healing abilities, psychic abilities, just your intuition on everyday level. And that looks different for everyone. But this is also just giving you the strength to stand in your most authentic self. This is just strength to be who you are at your core and listen into your soul mission. So those are just a couple of the dragons that they can help. And they don't mess about any one of them. When I was learning about the dragons and the angels way back in the day, I think we're going back to the days of DV, <laughs> before she converted and went back to yes. Christianity. But those were good books at the time. At that time, those information was out there. She was one of the few that was speaking about it in that tone. And one of the ones I always remember was calling on Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael to help heal things, be that physical products like heal my laptop because it's broken down on me so many times or heal myself. 
um, because I was forever in and out of hospital with leg ops and things like that growing up. So literally, I knew all the healers and I, I knew them all at one stage. And for me, it makes absolute green, um, absolute sense that one of my favorite dragons to work with is Emerald Dragon. Emerald Dragon has the most amazing mothering energy and she will nip at your heels if you are not resting and if you are not doing the physical therapy. So you're going to get nagged at if you're doing too much of one or too much of the other easily. But she also has this flip side that she actually works on building in abundance into your life. So it doesn't make shock anyone, I don't think, that to find out that she's connected with Archangel Raphael, who if you've worked with Archangel Raphael in the past, you're always told to imagine emerald green light coming from your hands when channeling Archangel Raphael. So this, and she, another trick, she's yelling at me, another trick is that she also works with a third eye development. So if you are trying to sharpen and shaping your psychic abilities, particularly your clairvoyancy. She's a great dragon to call upon for things like that. So as I said at the beginning, speak about all four of the archangel dragon, archangels, I should say, not the archangel dragon. <laughs> wow. A little bit tongue tied tonight, sorry. But one of the ones that does have a definite clan of dragons named after them is actually Archangel Gabriel. Now, to me, Archangel Gabriel was always a communicator. But again, this dragon clan is about purifying. It's about purification. It's about that deep cellular detox. So it's about removing the words of the past is the way I would like to think about this. It's about removing ancestral trop trauma from ourselves. It's about removing soul contracts are no longer in alignment with where we are in our journeys. It's also about being self-disciplined, this, this dragon clan. It's about standing up and really just focusing on your needs, your desires, but also make those healthy changes. If there's healthy changes in your life, you need to make, basically. So it's a very good dragon to help with us. One of the other dragons that works with Archangel Gabriel is the black dragon from Saturn. Now, the black dragon from Saturn, a lot of these dragons I've spoken about beforehand, you know when they're about. They're big presences. When their energy comes in, you are very aware of it. Black dragon from Saturn is actually a dragon that has a much softer energy because he works in the background quite a lot. He's there celebrating the losses. He's sorry, celebrating the wins, I should say. But he will really give you that kick up the behind if you need it. He's not going to go easy on you, but he's the one working the systems behind the scenes. And that's something that I think, and I often recommend this dragon for actually helping people in their businesses. If they're trying to get organized and they're trying to refine the structure of a website, a landing page, just whatever it is they're working on, this is a dragon to really call in. And the final dragon that works exceptionally well with Archangel Gabriel is Thor's dragon. So this, <coughs> excuse me, this is a dragon that you'll see um, Diana Cooper talk about. It's Thor's yeah. red and black dragons. Now, this is a protector. So this is automatically you think this should be with Archangel Michael because it's got that protection, heavy protection energy. But this is actually about getting you to relax to experience the tra rapid transformation that's coming in, but to get you to relax into it. So you're not having this resistance energy that is slowing down the process, which is why it's connected into Archangel Gabriel. Yeah, okay. Make makes sense. And really sort of like a good dragon for um, what, you know, what's going on in the collective at the moment yes. where people are kind of like, they're, they're kind of like waking and going, okay, there's, something yeah I'm not quite quite sure so that's going to be a great um I'm doing it now that's going to be a great arc um a great dragon yeah great dragon. to call on to call on yes. definitely and I think the next one I'm speaking about as well Archangel Yuri now this dragon um this Archangel, if I remember correctly was also known as the Archangel of Light and God's Light was what was always seen. So it doesn't shock you to learn that he's connected into one of the brightest dragons, which is a pure white dragon from Orianne. And this is a galactic dragon, but this dragon is about making you the transmitter. 
for ascension knowledge and getting you to really step and feel comfortable into your own pure soul wisdom. It's really about pushing you forward, but acting from a place of complete raw vulnerability, of honesty, of truth, and just letting yourself grow in the process. You don't need to be miles ahead of where you're at to speak to people about things. You can meet them where they are right now. You can maybe be only a couple of pages ahead. It doesn't really matter. But Archangel Yuri is a beautiful archangel that works within the temples of lights with the dragons. And it's really about just being your own light. So it can be really simple and easy. I mean, all of these dragons, they all have big personalities. I always say when I'm working with dragons and I'm tapping into someone's dragon team for the first time, I'm like, oh my, this one's sassy. Because it's just like pouring that bottle of wine with the friends round and just venting about all the stuff that's been happening in the world, what's going on in their lives. This is when you're in contact with a dragon team on a daily basis, that's exactly how it's like. It really is. There is no rest for the wicked. There is no, you will not be allowed to slag. You will be called out on your mistakes. You will just, but you will have the biggest support system behind you. So, yeah. I mean, I love working with the um, dragons over mental health issues and things like that, especially when people um, are having deep episodes of depression, anxiety, panic attacks, and things like that. Now, I'm sure at some stage yourself and all your viewers will have dealt with Archangel Men at some stage in the journeys. Archangel Metatron is all about that expansion, <laughs> that acceleration, that ascension energy. Archangel Metatron doesn't tend to go that easy on you <laughs> most no. of the time. No. <laughs> it's very, gentle but firm. Yes, gentle but firm. I will go with you 100% on that, gentle but firm, but not that easy. So Archangel Metatron is actually connected into a couple of dragons. So Golden Orange Dragon. Now, to me, I always say this is a great dragon for calling in if you are trying to sharpen your message and really call in your dream tribe for you to come in with your businesses. But Archangel Metatron reminds us of our power. That is one of the things. He does not allow us to filter as much with our words. We have to be much more raw, much more authentic. So if I'm making mistakes tonight, then that's just me. That's how I'm showing up tonight, basically. <laughs> but he allows me to also remind myself that although I can be passionate with my words, I'm not entitled to being aggressive. I've got to be the peaceful warrior, not the aggressor. And that can be something that you will see at times kick off on the social media in all different ways in quite a big fashion. This dragon will also help you just act from a place of peace, power with your words and with remembering. Even if we were to look at this card, you would see books flying about. It's like unwritten chapters. You are constantly rewriting your story from the daily actions and the daily choices you're making with your own free will. Golden Solar Dragon is another one <coughs> connected into Archangel Metatron. Again, I really like this dragon for two reasons. There is two dragons in the deck. One that will focus on divine masculine, one will focus on divine feminine. This one will focus on the divine masculine in the most healthiest of ways, because we've all met toxic masculines in our lifetime, but this is the healthy version of the divine masculine energy. So this one will actually help you declutter your cells, declutter the trauma, reprogram your DNA, and it's really a very soothing energy when you have this experience. But you usually find that after you've had this experience with this dragon, you get a lot of echo. Lots of little things start cropping up and you go, oh my God, what now? I don't want to deal with this right now. So this dragon is going to bring all that stuff that you thought you were over. And if you've just really suppressed it, it's going to come up to the surface. But this is shaping you into being a more inspirational leader. This is shaping you into being someone that people can relate to because you will have to learn and grow and cope with the situations that you really wanted to ignore in the past. You wanted to think you were done with it. That was it. Check the box. Don't need to look at that issue anymore. No, it's just time for another layer of the onion to be revealed, basically. It's the way I always look at this. I always look at this. Now, Final dragon that's connected into Archangel Metatron is the 
the alpha dragon. Now, when the alpha dragon comes into one of my healing sessions with whether it's a fire breath healing or dragon laser focus, I have to deal with him first. It doesn't matter how many other dragons have shown up, how many other dragons are in the team. They're all standing there like, oh, he's here, he's here. It's like stand to attention, the big boss is in and they can't function. The brains just switch off. He takes up so much room in the room. He really does just by sheer size, presence, energy. I always say that when I'm reading for people as well with the dragons, if this guy's in your team, you don't want him sticking around more than two weeks because he's going to create a lot of change. Anything that is not functioning, anything that is just being held together by duct taping glue, and you're just trying to make it fit. Mm -mm. As soon as he shows up, you can expect a lot of rapid change. It might feel very chaotic when that happens. But at the end of it, you're going to start a completely new chapter. It's the shift that needs to happen. It's not always the shift that you want to happen in that moment. And I think that's very poignant with our change of Metatron as well, because he will take you where you need to be, not where you always want to be. At least that's been my personal experience. <laughs> Oh yes, they're um, they they ha they have a way, and that you know that's what I like about um, the archangels um, and about and about angels is that they will work with what you need. Um, yeah. uh, no, actually, we don't use what we don't don't use the word need anymore because that's yeah. but they they work with what you want, whether you know you want that or not. No. Um, and how they might work with you is completely different as to how they might work with um, someone else. Yes. I'm, right. I'm guessing with the dragons, it's exactly the same. Two people, the, the, the same dragon will not work with those two people the same way. There'll be slight differences. Because yeah, there'll be slight differences, but you usually find with the dragons, there's a core belief. There's a core belief, a core message, and that message won't change. I am always very shocked if someone comes up to me and says i met ice dragon now ice dragon is a very unique dragon it's very uh, interdimensional dragon it doesn't tend to fluctuate into our reality at the same speed as other dragons do i met an ice dragon and it caused me business blocks i was like no 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 dragon is going to cause you a blockage. It's not going to put anything in you. It's not going to cause a seal, an implant, anything. It's not going to do any of that at any stage. It might bring that area up to your attention and make you aware of a block that exists. But they will never, ever. So I was just like, no, I'm a little bit, where did you hear this? <laughs> I was like, this does not make sense to my brain. Um, and the ice dragons as well, I'm completely getting off topic, so forgive me. Okay. <laughs> the ice dragons as well are actually very good at tapping us back in, especially when we've just gone through the winter cycle. They're very in touch with you, which makes sense. They want you to recalibrate. That's the whole message, the ice dragons, is to bring you back into focus, to get you to recalibrate and reevaluate areas of your life. Did everything go to plan over the last year? Did it happen the way you wanted it to happen? Where do you need to make the change? That's an ice dragon message. Not here, I'm here to cause a bit of mischief in your business and oh, that's just not, they don't have time for it. No. I'm gonna say that right now, they've got bigger fish to fry with you and that I guarantee you that will not be one of them. Yeah, no, to I, to I totally agree with, with that. And I've also, um, I don't know if you found this as well, but um, when when I've worked with dragons or they've, they've yeah. come in, they're not working for you they're working with you it's a collaboration that it you is. work that you work together they don't do things for you you have to work with them to do things a little bit of that's a little bit um different with the angels you have to ask them for help with the dragons they're already there and already willing to help they just need you to acknowledge them that's what i would say because they were quite often like I was speaking about the black dragon from Saturn earlier, they're often working in the background already with you unaware. They're also putting the things in motion. So it is a little bit different, but I would say it's, as I always say, if I'm meeting someone and speak or someone's hiring someone to come and help me in my business, it's a respect thing. I've got to show respect to get the best out of that person and they have to show me respect. It's the same with the dragons. 
if you go up to your dragon team and start demanding, I want to do this, this, and this, and this, and this. Yeah. I would, no, just that's not going to end well. That relationship, that partnership's not going to end well. So I wouldn't ever go in with that attitude. No, definitely not. No. So I'll speak about another couple of angels and dragons. So mm. we have Archangel Zekriel, who is also connected into St. Germain energy. And I'm sure a lot of you, our people out there that have heard about violet flame energy connected into St. Germain. So it won't surprise you to learn that both of these individuals are connected to a gold and silver violet flame dragon. This dragon, whenever I see this dragon come up, I get the chills because it was like, oh, we're about to make big stuff happen. Big events are happening, big transformational energy because more magic is coming into someone's life. More healing is coming into someone's life. But if they've already done a chunk of their own personal healing on their own personal journey, this can sometimes be a sign that they're a way to step into their own healing power and they're ready to be of service to others. And that can be quite intimidating for a lot of people. But for this moment and this partnership, they really do just bring in the energy in a very strong, powerful way, but in a way that is easy. It is easy. It is manageable. It's building up over time. It's not an instant rush. It's not the kick to get into motion. It is a much more nourishing energy for us to work with. And finally, the last Archangel I'll speak about is Archangel Shamriel. And this, this lovely angel is connected into a bunch of dragons that are focused on celestial love. That's literally what they're focused on. They're focused on up, upping the planet's vibration, humanity's vibration. They're focusing on helping us release love trauma we have gained from negative parental relationships and romantic relationships. Anywhere that we may have felt a bit bruised, a bit battered, a bit betrayed, they're helping you with all of that energy. And they're a really peaceful dragon. They come across in this like, I see white blue is the best way I can describe it, but they emit, the energy fields emit this pinkish glow. So they're very interesting to watch as they fly into your energy bodies. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. So I just want to take it, take it, take it back to, to when you were yeah. a child in case, in case anyone recognizes this with their own children yeah. um, when when they're watching. You know, how were your how were your family with with that? I mean, did you talk about it openly? Did you I keep did it to yourself? my mother in the beginning because there was little traits along the women's line. Along the women's line, there was little traits. I had a grandmother that could sense if someone was going to fall ill in the family, an older cousin that was good with tarot cards. My own mother, if she put her in a room with a Ouija board, the Ouija board would go nuts. And she didn't need to touch it. She just needed to be in the room. And for myself, but that was all, shh, we don't talk about that. We don't do that. We don't mention it. So I was very much the black sheep of the family saying, okay, I'm going to go purposely out there. I'm going to learn what I can. I'm going to make sense of this because it can be, when my clear audience clicked in, that can be a very scary moment for a lot of people. And it's like, okay, I don't know if I'm okay with this. And there's been points in my journey that I've taken a step back only to go right back in full throttle. It doesn't ever really last that long. It's just, I am where I'm meant to be is probably the best way to put it. But yes, there was points along the journey that you try to connect with family, you try and reach out. You're not always that well received. But what I have found out is with places like the internet, you usually find the right mentors, the right friends, you make the right connections over a period of time. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the, the, the beauties, you know, obviously around the internet can have its downsides, yeah. but the beauty is, the connection um, that you can make with other people, you know, yes. the fact that we've got that connection, you know, yeah. we're on other, you know, different parts of, um, of the UK, but you yeah. can find like-minded people now. Um, so, so, you, so you're never alone, technically. Yeah, you're you never, never alone. Ever. You're always supported, whether it's support that you can see or support that you can't see, you're always supported. And you will always 
this we fall into this human belief i believe at times that just because the people are not showing up for us in our physical reality that no one is hearing us and no one is seeing us especially at the beginnings of healing journeys that can be really difficult it's also a fear that a lot of people have is what if i start speaking out i'm just going to get all this hate mm -hmm. and i think fortunately fortunately that has started to change yes people are being able to share experiences that are raw open and honest and say this is how this energy is showing up for me and people are not going to judge them right away no, no. And then that is the beauty. Again, the internet has done that um, as as well, you know, so that people yeah. you are free to to talk about uh, to talk about those things now. Now, I'm going to take a slightly off topic because galactic <laughs> dragons, <laughs> well, you, you mentioned galactic dragons work by themselves. I want to know about galactic dragons. OK, so I was speaking about that in reference to the deep blue dragons, because you have the dark no, it's Dark and Victor. You have Galactic Blue Dragon. This dragon, very much like Alpha Dragon, who is also um, a ninth dimensional dragon, is massive. Just sheerly massive in size. But this is a dragon that is working with our galactic blueprints within our bodies. This is a dragon that is shaping up not just our vibration, but usually a country's vibration, usually an area's vibration. So Galactic Blue has this, oh, very strong predominant energy that shows up but this is a dragon i often find that will appear in way showers truth seekers readings or healings they know they're working with someone that has a big message when they show up yes they can work with everyone's blueprints but there's usually something very unique or a unique perspective that that person has that is needing to be shared with the world so I always get quite excited when I see galactic blue dragon coming around. There's many galactic dragons because there's a lot of dragons are actually connected into the solar system planets. There's a lot of dragons um, that are connected into starseed races and things like that. So there's a huge collection out there. But you also then have other elementals like the Pegasus, who I've been talking about on TikTok this week. Um, the Pegasus are basically connected into the star systems rather than the actual planets. Yes, you have sun and moon Pegasus, but they're actually, when you get into the nitty gritty of it, it's all about the stars with them. So, yeah, and and I and I love the fact that you know. It is all connected into the cosmos, into the into yeah. the into the into the into the um, galactic um, energies, because that's where we, you know, that's where we are. You know, we we come from stars. Yeah, we do. You, you know, so it's it's great that that's all sort of like coming into place now, and all sort of like merge into yeah. together. And again, more people are speaking about it. Yeah. Um, you know, on there and the fact that they're, you know, they're recognizing, you know, whenever anyone, you know, has heard of Pegasus, they think of yeah. be, because of the uh, mythologies. Yes. The, the why. But obviously you you have the you have the black Pegasus. Yes. Um, be, be, again, it's that balance of it of, is that balance. energies. It is. And what I find fascinating is because I work with so many people from different elemental lineage and I love working with all the elemental beings. But the dragons have introduced them all to me over a course of time. That's how I get to know other elemental beings. But as I explore the realms of the Fae, the realms of the Dragon Fae, the Unicorns, the Pegasus, the Kitsu, there's cosmic roads that lead to them all. There's galactic roots in them all. It would be silly of me to say that no, it's all just Earth-based. There is so many different dimensions that all of these beautiful light beings, and I'm going to put it that way, they're all yeah. light beings, um, that they just work within. They just work within. And different ones can help you with different emotions and different situations in your life. So if you're just honoring them all and being respectful to all, you're going to get to the places that you want the answers from much quicker. So if people want to, uh, um, you know, connect with these dragons, what would, would you say was one of the best ways of them doing that? 
Oh, goodness me. I think it's where each people are on their journey. If it's like the first time they're connecting with dragon energy, I would honestly say go out and get an oracle card deck on the dragons that call to you. For me, I always recommend a good beginner's deck as Universal Dragons by Carla Maro. I think it's an amazing, soft energy. It's non-scary. The imagery is very on point. It's focusing on the light. It's very good. I like that a lot. Um, but if someone is also already got like a meditation practice or something in their daily lives, I would say to actually, you know, sit down and just focus on calling in your dragon team. Now, the reason I say dragon team and not personal dragon is there's a big myth around personal dragons that there is this belief in the community that we have one dragon. That is like our guardian dragon. And this is, comes from the same belief system that says we have one guardian angel. We have a lot of angels around us. We have a lot of different beings around us all the time. And the dragons are like to work in teams. Some dragons will work solo, but some come in families of five or six. So a team of dragons for one individual person can be anywhere between six dragons and 38 dragons at any one time because it's changing out with their needs. So for me, the beginning stages are just go and get an oracle set, just play around with some cards, just get the general messages, get comfortable stepping into that energy, or go into it with meditation. And there's many meditations out there you can buy, there's many different paths you can choose. Even if you're very advanced, just sit. Sit with something that calls to you. I am not a great fan of crystal dragon skulls because the messages I've always got is the dragons see that like they're slain friends. They don't like that. But if I've got heaps of dragon statues all over the place, that's okay. They're like, honor us in that way. Play around. They're friends. Just don't go in with anger or why is no one showing up for me? It doesn't always happen right away. Just let them come to you. Let them build that trust and it'll happen. Yeah, cool. So do you actually have um, a meditation to uh, to connect with the dragons at all? I have many different dragon meditations. I have many different dragon meditations for healing, for business, for different things. Um, but I have a seven dragon meditation as well. But people can just go and have a look and I can drop that in the comments below if you like. Yeah, no, that 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 would, that would be lovely. Yeah, I've I've sort of like um I've got a, a guide meditation for dragons. I've actually put in another one out soon yeah. as well that I recall um, when I took because uh, uh, I run because when I run retreats down in Glastonbury, we always go on the Sunday to the tour to connect with the dragons of the tour. Yes, running, I running love the dragons. I keep meaning to get to Glastonbury. I'm going to get there soon, but um, I love it. Yeah, I'm, I mean, the, the, the dragon energy um, around the tour is absolutely amazing. And the last time um, I was down there and we did have, um, and I took us into the tour, oh my God, we went round with the dragons healing so many places. It was, ju it was just so amazing. I amazing. I can time. fully believe that. So yes. I'm, so I'm going I'm, I'm gonna to actually going to re-record it. Um, because obviously it was out in the open. Yeah. So, so, so you got actually, a lot of noise. That's the only thing is when you do it live, you can have all this extra noise. Exactly. It was fine at the time, although we were getting bitten by um, gnats and mosquitoes oh, no. at the time. <laughs> eaten alive, yes. <laughs> yeah, basically eaten alive. But hey, that's all part of the journey. That's the part process. of the UK life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly and you're working you're working with the dragons and merlin yes. what could you want actually what exactly um, and i love that when i'm working with the dragon fame particular because they take you into that realm of avalon they take you into the merlin and merlin himself he has like three different dragon clans that he works with across many different realms so again there's i could speak about that for a long time so. <laughs> <laughs> hey so that's that, that's that's fine by me. We could we could we could talk all day about dragons and <laughs> yes, angels. You know, I'm I'm more I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy uh, with that. But I know that people like to. Uh, they, <laughs> they, it, it, it can go off completely. Yeah, it can it can go on for a long time. So we'll exactly, and we can and we could go off in places where. Uh, um, yeah. where, where people might not quite understand what. Stand, we're, yeah. Well, we're we're going on, but I like I like the fact that you know people no longer a majority of people mm -hmm. yeah. no longer see dragons as fearful yeah uh, and that's be, been a beautiful be change 
to witness happen over the last 10 years because it's only been the last 10 years that's happened because even in magical communities for the longest time it was seen as you work with the dragons that's darker magic that's a bit taboo and it's been a beautiful thing for me to witness and see books like Diana Cooper come out. Although there was books by D.J. Conway and other things before that, they were much more ritual based. They weren't easy for the everyday person to integrate and digest into their daily lives. So it's nice to see that change happening. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I noticed coming in. So um, angels sort of like came in first. And then after yeah. the angels, that kind of like allowed the unicorn energy to come in. And then I yeah. noticed after the unicorn energy, that's when the dragon energy came in. So it's kind of like we were, be give, we were given steps to yeah, actually definitely. come into these energies. Definitely. I 100% and, agree with you. Yeah. Um, we saw somewhere in between the unicorn and the dragons, we also saw fate energy come in. Yes. But we do have that beautiful link and i love how if you follow the celtic goddesses they link back into the angels the unicorns then they link into the dragon energy the magical energy you just see the patterns fully coming back full circle in so many of these um cycles at the moment and it's really exciting to behold and witness if you've been within these communities for a long time and have seen the change in attitude yeah, no, it's, it's so amazing. And it's going to get, you know, and the fact we're now getting a um, contact with more galactic beings as well. Yes. Then. So it's kind of like the dragons have led into that kind, you know, into that. Yes. So that energy is now coming in and it is literally sort of like coming full circle yeah. um, in, in there. So it's absolutely, yeah, it's, as you said, it's absolutely amazing and beautiful to yeah. To, witness. To, to to witness um def, definitely you know and a great time to be alive on earth at this time <laughs> yeah um, just without some of the turmoil going off <laughs> ah yeah but that has exactly. to, you know but that that's there that's yeah <laughs> it's exactly as long as we stay in it you know as long as we stay in our own light our own truth yes um, and stay in our own vibration and focus on keeping our vibration and our um communities that's the way i'm going to put it our communities vibration in a good place that makes all the difference but it can be very hard to maintain that at times it it, it it can be which is where you know when you go into that reflective practice with cards or meditation mm -hmm. it can make all the back, difference you can come back you can come back to that so as you know I do um, guide meditations and angelical card readings and each week I like to ask my guests whether they would like me to do a mini guide meditation or put an angelical card but when I know that guests actually do things as well yeah I kind of like say would you like to pull a card or do something for us yeah I am more than happy to pull a dragon card for everyone here absolutely so let me just shuffle my cards I am not the neatest shuffler you will see these beautiful shufflers that can do all the tricks I'm not like that I can't I can't do that at all it's no like, no and I'm also one. a heat seeker when I am shuffling cards I go by the heat of the card so it's not like the jumpers or anything like that, because we would be here all day with the jumpers I get. That would just take forever more. Um, and this deck, particularly, I'm holding it so well used. It's got curls. It's got everything. <laughs> it's it's yeah. got all the signs of a well beloved deck. I'm going to put it that way. Yes, I got the same. I love that deck. Yeah, I have multiple dragon decks, but these are just the ones that were sitting on my workspace at the moment. So let's just go with the hair. Okay, as I was saying, I'm a heat seeker. So when I'm playing around with cards, I'm always going for the hottest card in the deck that appears to me. Now, this is actually so on point. This is the blue dragon from the Pleiades. Now, she is known for heart healing and heart activation energy. Now, she's good at physical heart healing. So if you've got a relative that has heart problems, blocked um, arteries, heart disease in the family, you can slow down the generation of that with this dragon. But for us as a collective just now, she's saying to focus on the healing aspects of being kind to each other, that the collective is going for a healing cycle right now. And even if someone is not coming from the most healed place in their interactions with you, try and be the more caring person in that um, exchange. Blue Dragons from the Pleiades, she's a big presence. She's a nurturing 
pleasant and she encourages others to be equally as nurturing because it's only when we're giving and receiving honest heartfelt interactions do we see the biggest changes in our lives the biggest next steps is the words i'm hearing so yeah. that is what she has to say for us and uh, should i tell you what the coincidence with that is she is mm. actually my wallpaper on my computer oh i love that <laughs> See, absolute divine timing, divine timing, divine sisters. Got to love it. I, I know. Absolutely. It's like someone comes to me for the first time and tells me straight up the dragons have been stalking me. The amount of times I've had that from someone on a discovery call, or just a casual chat, I was like, that does not surprise me. That's how they operate. <laughs> they just show up. They, they, oh yes, they, 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 they certainly do. Yeah. So. I'm going to ask you, Victoria, do you want me to do a mini guided meditation or pull an oracle card for you in those oh, watching? Pull an oracle card, please. Why not? I will. Funny enough, I have them in my hand as we speak. Perfect. And that. <laughs> so obviously. I think with I, our line of work, there's always at least a couple of decks just right next to you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Whichever room you go in, there's going to be a, going to be a deck. In. I have a bookshelf that's pretty much covered in cards. So, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, when, when people come and we come around, it's like, so what new deck you got today? Yes, I've got, I've got a friend that will regularly, have you not got enough decks yet? I'm like, no, they've all got their own energy, their own personality, and they all tell me different things. So, no. Exactly. <laughs> they, 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 they always, they always, they always, they always come in. Um, well, the last time I was standing in me, I didn't actually pick up a deck of cards because there was oh. none called me. But, yeah. but, but there's a whole different story about that one, yeah. which we won't go into, um, <laughs> which we won't go into. So when I do the cards, obviously, um, I work, where I work with the past, I do past life. Yeah. and stuff that's when I do past stuff it's we go to the past life to heal from it mm -hmm. and understand it so it doesn't affect it in the present and when I take people into the future we go into the future to see understand and know the steps yeah. to take so we come back to the present so when I do the cards it is always for what we need to know for our highest good at this moment in time because I think Same. the present is so 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 in important yeah. um so what does Victoria and everybody who's watching this know? Need to know for their highest good at this moment in time. Whoa, they are really playing up. Victoria and everyone need to know for their highest good at this moment in time. Okay, I know what you want me to do. You want me to choose today. Okay. Beautiful. So we have got miracles expect the wondrous to emerge oh wonderful that sounds amazing how beautiful is that so so what they're on this card is saying to you victoria and to everyone watching you know miracles are happening all the time we just have to expect them to happen um you know we don't have to look for them or think oh they're going to happen expect miracles to um be coming into your energy field at this moment in time expect wondrous things to happen don't question don't think oh i want this or, um they should be coming know that they are there expect them and ex yeah. and expect to use magic every day be curious yes you, you you know you know the work you're doing you know this is this is such a confirmation for you um mm -hmm. with 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 all the work you're doing and for everyone who's watching you know this is saying to you just open yourself up to those miracles and allow them into your life because they are truly there for you mm -hmm. um, absolutely i mean i think that is such an important message for us to all hear it's just play with the energy, be curious, be playful, expect the best and step into like, it's already showed up for me and I'm owning it. I love that sort of energy. Yeah, no, that is the, the, one of the best energies um, yeah. to, to work with. So Victoria, do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers? I think if you're first, just getting curious, just playing on the curiosity factor. If you're getting curious about dragons, do not be held back by myths or rumors. Actually get, go out, do your own personal research. Don't take Game of Thrones into this at all, because one of the top questions I get asked, do you love Game of Thrones? I've never watched an episode in my life. I've 
<laughs> but I love the clips I see, but I've never, but that's not how I was introduced to dragons. I was introduced to dragons in a different way, in a different um, energetic compatibility with myself. But just notice, just notice, are you being seeing more dragon statues? Are you seeing more dragon images? Are you thinking about dragons? Did you have a dream about one? Did you just have that inclination of, I need to go back and listen to that podcast. I need to reread that article. They will show up for you many different ways and many different times. And it might become, when you're ready to really work with them, it might become like, oh my God, I can't turn any which way without seeing a dragon somewhere. And it's insane, but it's completely true. So if you're feeling that urge to play with the dragons, go in with a clear mindset, a clean slate. Do not fall into the belief that a dragon is evil, a dragon is going to try and trick you, a dragon is going to do X, Y, Z. That's just not the case. Dragons and angels, like I said at the start, are very connected, but they both have one thing in common in deep volumes, is they are there to help you, to help you ascend and to help you develop. That is how they work. And that's their main mindset around everything. Yeah, beautiful and a good reminder. Um, so I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely have. So if people want to connect with you, Victoria, how do they do that? You can find me on social media as the intuitive listener. Um, I always describe myself as an elemental um, mentor and healer for people, elemental beings. Yes, the dragons are the main ones I talk about, but I do talk about the rest of them too. So you can find me on Facebook as the Intuitive Listener, TikTok, um, Clapper, <laughs> Instagram, you will find me. Just look for the Intuitive Listener and you will find me in many places. I'll give you some links as well to drop below. Beautiful, yes. I'll put the links in the comments so that yeah. you just need to click on them and you go straight there. You don't have to yeah. worry about typing them in. Um, so thank you so much, Victoria, for sharing your wisdom. It's been absolutely amazing. I've thoroughly enjoyed um, the conversation with you. And thank you so much again for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You, you know, the, the wisdom of the dragons and the archangels. Yes. And we could we could go on talking about them for oh, yeah, a long, <laughs> a long, long time. But but we won't because I know people no, have to uh, we'll get be on. for today. We'll be here. Yeah. Yes, get, get on with get on with their lives. <laughs> so, um, of course, again, thank you everyone for watching. And of course, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me so that we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free future life progression recording to discover your destiny by singing into your future to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts by signing up to my email list. And again, I want to thank everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe, hit that bell button to be notified when the show goes live, or I post new guide meditations, you know, and don't forget when you um, like, share, subscribe, not just to me, but to Victoria's social media, you're really helping us with the algorithms. You're really helping us get our message out there to be of guidance and help to others. So you're part of this um, ripple effect. So don't be shy about sharing, liking, yeah. commenting, subscribing, following. You know, it really does make a big difference um, to get in, you know, to get in the messages out there. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.